Hello everyone, my name is Farnoosh Hashemi from the University of British Columbia, and I am going to present our work on firm core decomposition of multilayer networks. In many real world complex networks, such as social, biological, and transportation networks, the interactions between objects tend to span multiple aspects. Uh, as an example, interaction between people can be professional, family, or social. Or in another example, in gene networks, an edge can represent a physical association of two genes or their uh, direct interaction. To accurately model these complex systems, multilayer graphs have been proposed. Multilayer graphs are graphs consisting of nodes, edges, and layers such that each layer represents one type of uh, connection. In a more concrete example, consider a collaboration network. Each node represents a researcher and an edge represents a co-authorship in a paper. Figure A shows a single layer perspective of this network. In this perspective, we have three groups of researchers with the same structure. So we cannot distinguish them by the structural properties. On the other hand, figure B shows a multi-layer perspective uh, of the network, where each layer represents collaborations on an individual topic. Contrary to the single layer perspective, the multi-layer graph lets us distinguish the structure of these groups. Uh, in this work, we show a multi-layer graph G as a triple uh, V, E, and L, where V is the set of nodes, L is a set of layers, and E is the set of edges. In multi-layer graphs for each node, we have an L-dimensional degree vector uh, in which the I element shows the degree of node U in layer I. Finally, we refer to the uh, lambda's uh, largest value in the degree vector as the top lambda degree. The K-core decomposition is a widely used operation in graph mining due to its many useful properties. K-core is a maximal subgraph in which each node has at least K neighbors within the subgraph. For example, in this graph, red nodes are three core since each red node is connected to three other red nodes. There are some important properties of the K-cores. The first one is uniqueness. The second property is the hierarchical structure. And the most important one is uh, its linear time decomposition algorithm. This property of K-core uh, has made it a powerful tool for analyzing massive networks. Uh, Azimi et al. extend the notion of K-core to multi-layer graphs, since each layer can be seen as a separate single layer or simple graph. They suggest considering a different core number for each layer. In fact, they uh, suggest considering an L-dimensional vector K, such that the L's element shows the core number in the L's layer. As an example, uh, in this collaboration network, blue nodes are uh, 432 core, which means each blue node has at least four blue no uh, neighbors in layer one, three blue neighbors in layer two, and two blue neighbors in layer three. The second definition of cores uh, in multilayer graphs is proposed by Liu et al. Um, it first chooses a subset of layers and then considers the same core number for all selected layers. Uh, there are two main drawbacks uh, to these uh, two core definitions. The first limitation is forcing nodes to satisfy degree constraint in all or all selected layers, including noisy insignificant layers. However, these noisy and insignificant layers might be different for each node. As an example, in this figure, we have an isolated green node in each layer. Therefore, the insignificant layer is different for uh, each one of them. The hard constraint of multilayer K-core and core cube um, causes missing these green nodes. And the second limitation is the time complexity of the decomposition algorithms, which is exponential time in the number of layers. To address these limitations, we introduce firm core structure. The intuition behind firm core is that we allow nodes to satisfy the degree constraint in different layers. Accordingly, given two integer k and lambda, k lambda firm core is a maximal subgraph in which each node in at least lambda layers has at least k neighbors within the subgraph. As an example, in this collaboration network, blue nodes are four to firm core, um, as each blue node is connected to at least four blue nodes in at least two layers. Similarly, we can see red nodes are three, three firm core. Uh, Why previous cores misses green nodes, these nodes per lens of firm core are three, two firm core which means each of the green nodes has at least three green neighbors in at least two layers. 
Uh, this is because FirmCore allows nodes to satisfy the degree constraint in different subset of layers. Also, we extend FirmCore to directed multi-layer graphs. Directed graphs naturally arise uh, in several applications. For instance, the web network can be modeled as a multi-layer directed graph in which each edge is associated with a label. Depending on application, this label can be time stamp or the topic of the source page. We extend therefore to directed multi-layer graphs by separating the in-degree and out-degree constraint. So we separate the subgraph into two groups such that uh, nodes in the first group should satisfy out-degree constraint and nodes in the second group should satisfy in-degree constraint. Even three integers k, r, and lambda KR lambda firm decor is the maximal ST induced subgraph in which each node in S in, lamb in a lambda layers has at least K out neighbors in T. And each node in T in uh, at least lambda layers has at least uh, all in neighbors from S. As an example, in this figure, consider the union of red and purple nodes as our S subgraph and the union of blue and purple nodes as our T subgraph. Then the induced SD uh, subgraph is a 3 to 1 firm decor. Next, we show that uh, firm core has nice properties of K core in single layer graphs. First, uh, K lambda firm core and KR lambda firm decor of a graph are unique. Second, it has a hierarchical structure property. It means K plus 1 lambda and K lambda plus 1 firm cores are subgraphs of K lambda firm core. We also have the same property for the firm decors. Finally, if we define core lambda index of u as the maximum value of k such that k lambda firm core includes u, then its uh, index is no more than the top lambda degree of u. Uh, in the firm core decomposition, we want to find all non-empty firm cores. In our algorithm, given the value of lambda, we iteratively remove a node with top lambda degree less than k. Since we need to calculate top lambda degree and keep it updated during the algorithm, we use heap data structure. By repeating this process for all possible values of lambda, we can find all non-empty firm cores of G. Uh, note that since, uh, since uh, each run of the value of lambda is independent of others, we can take advantage of multiprocessor programming. Regarding time complexity in our algorithm, each edge will be removed, uh, removed uh, one time, and for each removed edge, we need to update the top lambda degrees of its adjacent nodes. Also, for initialization of top lambda degree, we need to sor sort all of them. Therefore, the time complexity of this algorithm is as follows. The uh, procedure for the directed firm core is very similar to firm core. Given lambda, we first set both S and T to V, then iteratively remove a node from S with top lambda out degree less than K, and remove a node from T with top lambda in degree less than R. Next, we um, use firm cores to provide an approximation solution to the problem of finding the densest subgraph in multi-layer graphs, which has been proven to be NP-hard. The density measure in multi-layer graphs uh, is defined by Gallimberti et al. as an optimization problem to model the trade-off between high density and the number of layers exhibiting, exhibiting uh, the high density. To control this trade-off, we use parameter beta. Accordingly, the problem of finding the densest subgraph is defined as finding a subgraph that maximizes the density. Also, the density of subgraph in single layer directed graphs gets two subgraph S and T as input and considers the ratio of the number of edges from S to T over the geometric means of the edge sizes. Inspired by this definition and the definition of density in multilayer graph, in this study, we define the density function in directed multilayer graph as follows. Again, uh, the, dense, uh, the densest subgraph problem seeks to find uh, a subgraph with maximum density. Our approximation algorithm for this problem uh, is to return the densest firm core as an approximate solution. To the best of our knowledge, our algorithm is the first polynomial time approximation algorithm. Also, the approximation guarantee that is provided by our algorithm is better than the state of the art, which is exponential time. More precisely, our algorithm provides an approximation guarantee of psi over times uh, L to power beta plus one, Theoretically, psi is defined as a maximum of this function. 
but conceptually we can say that psi is the function of network topology. While our graph is uh, dense enough, this approximation guarantee would be a constant close to one over two. Uh, we perform experiments on 16 real networks. Uh, their domains cover social, biological, financial, cooperation, and collaboration networks. And also the number of edges is varied from hundreds of thousands to one billion edges. First, we evaluate the efficiency of FermCore. Here, the first two algorithms are FermCore algorithm in a single processor and multiprocessor setting. CoreCube is the algorithm for uh, CoreCube decomposition and other four algorithms proposed for multilayer K-Core decomposition. We found that in large graphs, FermCore is two order of magnitude, magnitude faster than other algorithms. Moreover, for a small networks like FAO with large number of layers, the state of the art algorithms couldn't terminate before 10 days, while FermCore terminates less than two minutes. Uh, in order to compare the quality and density of FermCore and the state of the art, we compared the densest FermCore and the densest multilayer K-Core over all data sets. Our results shows that the density of um, densest FermCore is 2.44 times the density of densest multilayer K-Core in the best case and one over 1.4 times in the worst case. Please note that this comparable quality is achieved while FermCore is much faster. Next, we compare the density such that um, each of these cores exhibit in each layer. We found that the, then, that the densest firm core has a higher average of layers density and also has a uh, higher density in more layers. Uh, finally, we compare the distribution of the local crossing coefficient of nodes in the densest firm core and uh, the densest multilayer K core. While the overall distribution is similar, FermCore is um, capable of finding a subgraph that contains more nodes with high local clustering coefficient uh, and less nodes with low, uh, local clustering coefficient. And next, we evaluate the scalability of the FermCore and FermDecore by varying the number of layers. We found that uh, contrary to the previous algorithms that scale exponentially even in practice, both of our algorithm scales uh, gracefully. Also, please note that FermCore can scale to graphs with billions of edges, and also FermDecore can scale to graphs with tens of millions of edges. As an illustration of the superior uh, quality of FermCore and its usefulness on temporal graphs, we have done a case study on the temporal DVLP dataset. In this dataset, each layer is a snapshot of the DVLP dataset in different layers. Choosing beta equals to 1.1, densest firm core contains 31 nodes and has a density of 45.06, while the densest multilayer K core has a smaller density. The reason is that this subgraph corresponds to an annual report, some of whose authors may change, their, uh, may change each year, and as a result, each year could be an insignificant layer for some of them and not all of them. So because of that, the multi-layer K-Core misses it. Our next case study corresponds to the FAO dataset. In this dataset, each node is a, a, a country and directed edges represent trades between them. Also here, each layer corresponds to a group. We found that the first two leading exporters countries in each group are in the S parts of the found densest subgraph. Uh, there are some potential future works. Uh, in the theoretical aspect, the hardness of the densest subgraph problem in directed multilayer graphs is uh, still unknown. More One over, minute left. Sure, thank you. Moreover, in all of our algorithms for uh, different values of, of lambda, we start from a scratch. Here, there is a potential to improve the efficiency of algorithms. Moreover, firm core structure in multilayer graphs can be used for modeling communities in multilayer graphs. In our recent work, we use the idea of firm core and extend trust structures to define communities in multilayer graphs. This model shows promising results in the classification of brain networks, which could be a sign of the usefulness of firm core. Finally, several uh, work use uh, core structure for visualizing graphs. One potential is to use FemCore to visualize multilayer graphs. Uh, 
uh, our code and all used data sets are publicly available on GitHub. Thank you so much for your attention and I would be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Farnoosh. Very nice talk too. Question time. Does anybody have any question? I have one question. Um, what is the dependence of the running time of your algorithm on the parameter lambda? Because if you set lambda equal to one, I don't remember if lambda is a fraction of the actual or the actual number of layers, but let's say if, I, if you take all layers, you want uh, the K core to be, so every node has K neighbors in every layer. What happens then? Uh, there is no uh, effect of the lambda. In fact, because we have term for decomposition in graph, we have to decompose the graph for all values of K and lambda. I see. So the, uh, but for lambda say equal one or yeah, all layers, uh, uh, is the problem the same as uh, the one for which you mentioned that there was only an exponential time algorithm before? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's so this, this improves in the, on that. Yes, yes. Okay. So also for that special case, your algorithm is from exponential goes to polynomial. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. 